Hi. Um, so I'm Robin, and I'm a sound artist. I create interactive sound installations, but I have no background at all in engineering, no background in programming. So how do I create interactive sound installations if I have no technical background at all? Well, that's what I'm here to talk to you about. So my background is in music. I started basically doing com composition for instruments. And then I started doing composition for electronics. When I started doing composition for electronics, it became very evident that people on the electronics side don't know how to read notation. They also don't understand how rhythm works. I then realized a lot of people in the world don't understand how to read music. And I was like, this is very, very sad. There's a composer in every single person out there. People should be able to write music. There's music in all of us. We should be able to make music out of every object out there. I want to make every object come to life. I want to make every object make sound. So, basically, I went out and discovered this little object called the Arduino. So, there are many different models of the Arduino. Here's one here. It's the Decimilia. Basically, you connect different sensors to the Arduino. It's used in many different like, types in the world, um, like categories in the world. People in the sciences use it, in medical centers, people in the arts use it. So, myself, I use it in the sound world to make interactive objects. So, one of my things is balloons. I decided to create this room of helium balloons. You have helium balloons in the ceiling. When you pull some of these balloons, the large ones, as you can see there, the blue, the yellow, and the red ones, it rings as church bell noises. So, how did I create this? Basically, I took an elastic band, which is called a stretch sensor, in the technical terms. I took the readings from the stretch sensor, connected it to the Arduino, which was then connected to my computer, and I was telling it which stretch sensor is connected to which balloon, how long was someone pulling this, stretch, this balloon for, how long were they holding it for, and then basically telling it which balloon is it pulling, which sound should it ring, and basically which church bell noise should it be making. So... So yeah, that was a prototype. And then I decided to create element. So it's an umbrella and an instrument. So it's a Chinese umbrella. Now imagine it's raining. You open an umbrella. Slowly as you open this umbrella, it starts raining more and more. And then as you put this umbrella over your head, it starts sounding like it's raining on the umbrella. Yeah. So basically it's this. Thank you. <laughs> so how did I create that? Basically, in the umbrella, I put an infrared sensor. So an infrared sensor, for those of you that don't know what it is, is in your syst alarm systems in your house, when it picks up if someone's in your house, those little red sensors there, that's an infrared sensor. It can pick up distance. So in the umbrella, it's picking up how open is your umbrella, how closed is your umbrella. So basically, it's closed, more open it is, the more rain you're hearing. And then to pick up where's the umbrella from the ground, I've got an accelerometer. This is the same as in your phone when you take a picture and you tilt your phone and your picture moves depending on where your phone is to the ground. That's what I had. Where's the umbrella from the ground? So 
Yeah, that's telling it the sound. Basically, make it sound as if it's raining on the umbrella. So those are just two of the many projects that I've done. So it does sound like I'm an engineer from what you hear from my projects. No, luckily enough, I was based in a music department and an engineering department. So I sat down with engineers and I said, right, these are the ideas I have, but how do I create these things? And they were the ones that told me, this is an infrared sensor, this is an accelerometer, this is what you need to start making these little projects. But then I moved back to Cape Town, and I was like, I don't have this department, I don't have engineers at my access, what do I do now? So I created Arduino Cape Town. It's basically a little hub of people. You can find us on Facebook. But the nicest thing here is that we can basically write to each other on Facebook and go, I need help with this project. Can someone meet me for coffee down the road? Because we're all in Cape Town. And we meet and we say, right, tell me, I need this help with this. Tell me, what can I do? Can someone help me build this project? And we've been going for 12 months. There are 140 members. It's absolutely great. This is a little uh, whistle that's been built from a 3D printer that's made by an Arduino by one, two of our members of the group. So what's next? For me, I'm still creating little interactive projects. I was actually busy telling um, one of the members in the audience here that my next project is a little, basically, flex sensor that I'm going to attach to my arm here that's going to pick up this movement and create a bouncy ball noise can pick up whether I'm throwing something against the wall and make that sound or up in the ceiling. So that's my next project and creating all sorts of interactive th things like interactive window displays. And who knows where a technology like this that's so accessible for people like us that maybe don't have a technical background could take us. Thank you.